welcome to the first video on Chapter 11-2, where we discuss the unique differences of our chi-square test and what happens when we have a two-way table. So you should be able to do most of this by the end of this video. The last three bullets are really the last two bullets are going to be the next video. So in the previous chapters, we talked about two two different samples. Specifically in chapter 10, we talked about two sample Z procedures. So that's what happens when you want to compare proportions of success in two populations or two treatments. What happens when you want to compare two or more? Well, also what happens if you want to compare the distributions of a single categorical variable across several populations or treatments? That's the more important one when you're doing experimental designs, actually. Um, so we need a new test, otherwise you're just sitting there doing lots of different multiple comparisons and it just becomes chaos and it's not necessarily valid statistical data. So instead of doing two AZ tables, we get to use uh, our chi-square test. So let's jump on in. Market researchers suspect that background music may affect the mood and buying behavior of customers. They go to a Mediterranean restaurant and they compare three randomly assigned treatments, no music, French accordion music, and Italian, to three more kind of treat, not really treatments because they're not uh, choices that the customers have, and they get to order French, Italian, or any other entree. And so they record that. This is what they record it. So to really understand that two-way table, I need to make it values that make sense, aka their proportions. So we're going to do our conditional distribution. Um, the first one is by each treatment. So uh, all by the columns themselves. So here's our first treatment, no music. Here's our second treatment, French music. Here's our third treatment, Italian music. If you need to review how to do conditional distributions, don't hesitate to do so. That is your vocab word. It is an older topic, but it is conditional distributions. So there you go. If we did a bar graph of each, we can immediately see some really cool things happening with those entrees being ordered by the music. And we can write up a sum from that bar graph. So if you need to go back and forth between the PDF, you can. But here's my summary of what I saw in that bar graph. The type of an entree that treatment, the type of entree that customers buy seems to differ considerably across the three music treatments. Orders of Italian entrees are very low when French music is playing, but they're higher when Italian music or no music is playing. French entrees seem to be popular as they're ordered frequently under all conditions, but most notably, it's ordered more often when French music is playing. For all three music treatments, the percent of other entrees ordered was similar. So all three choices that the customers had. I went through and I analyzed a little bit of each. But the problem of how to do many comparisons at once with an overall measure of confidence is common. And what's the most common about these are the two parts that we have to deal with. The overall test, what we're really good with, the hypothesis testing, and then that detailed follow-up analysis, which hopefully we'll get to see at the end of our video, and if not, we'll push it into the next one. So let's just jump on in. Uh, if we start with our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, so if we're thinking about our example, when we think about our null, there is no difference in the distribution. So then this would be that, you know, there is no difference in entree ordering depending on the music that's playing. The alternate would be there is a difference in entree ordering um, as music is played. And so that's how we would wrap up this chi-square test for homogeneity. I can't say that word today, guys. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and jump on in further. Let's do the math. So we know the observed values, but we don't know the expected count. So we have to do a little bit of formula. We got to do a little bit of inference here. So if I know that the total number of French items ordered in the restaurant was 99, and the total number of dishes ordered in the restaurant was 243, and I also know the total number of entrees ordered when no music was played, then I can figure out the expected count of French entrees bought when no music was played. Let's watch a little animation so we can rewrite that formula, which you see on the left-hand side of your screen. There is a typo here. It says French wine. I'm pretty sure that should be French entree. Anyway. Ta-da! A little bit of rearranging, and we notice something. We end up with the row by the column divided by the total. And look at that. That's actually a formula we need. The expected count formula for a two-way table is literally going to be your row times your column total divided by the table total for each and every one of those um, little parts of your table. The conditions for performing a chi-square test for homogeneity, they, they don't change at all from the chi-square test for goodness of fit. So just be aware that if you're doing name that procedure and you're performing a chi-square test for homogeneity because it's a two-way table and not a one-way table, then your conditions remain the same. So you just go ahead and do that in your plan step. 
Just as we did with the chi-square goodness of fit test, we're gonna still use that same statistic for chi-square, but this time we need both the observed counts and the expected counts of the two-way table. So if you look right here where my cursor is circling, that's the expected counts. So in each one of them, we did, uh, you know, for, for the none, we did that together. But for the French, let's do this 30.56 was 99 uh, times 75 divided by 243, and then 99 times 84 divided by 243, and so on and so forth. So it's each one of those row times column divided by total, row times column divided by total, row times column divided by total over and over and over again. So now we can actually do our chi-square test. And we subtract each of these, observe minus expected, and square it and divide by the expected. We do that for all nine of those values. And we end up with a chi-square value of 18.28. You can see my cursor is circling it. So we end up with that chi-square value of 18.28. But as you know, we're not done. Because the chi-square value alone doesn't help us. We need the p-value. So let's go ahead and run through this like a state plan do conclude. So here's our state, our null hypothesis, there is no difference. Our alternate hypothesis, there is a difference in the odd distribution of entrees when music is played. We have already, so that was our state, probably since they didn't tell us anything else, we would have written that alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Uh, what else would we have done in the state? Uh, that's about it. And then our plan, Name that, uh, name that procedure, we would have done the chi-square test for homogeneity, can't say the word right now, and then we would have checked our conditions, random 10% large counts, they all, uh, they all match up, so we're good to go. And we got our chi-square, so there's our state plan due, we got our chi-square, now let's do our conclude. But before we can do the conclude, we need that p-value. They do a little bit with the TI Inspire right here, or TI-84. So that's what this information right here and this information down here are talking about. If you have access to a calculator, I tell you to practice with it. If not, um, look for addendum videos where I'm going to try to get my hands on a calculator and show through some of those important things that you might need on that calculator. But in the meantime, we can still use the, the chi-square distribution table in the back of our textbook. The first thing we need is our degrees of freedom. If you notice, our degrees of freedom right here, the DF is equal to 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1. Where did that come from? Well, if you remember with our previous video, degrees of freedom came from our categories minus 1. But we have a two-way table, so we have two different categories. So since we have category number 1, the three different types of music, we subtract that by 1, and we end up with 2. Then we have category number to the, the row category, it's the type of entree they could select, French, Italian, or other. And so again, you do categories minus two. So you have two times two. So that's really what we do, is you take your two unique categories, and you subtract by one, and then you multiply them together. So that's where I got this value from, three minus one, three minus one. The formula for it is um, row category minus one, uh, column category minus one. That's if you needed to see that. So I know that I'm at degrees of freedom four. I go to my table in the back and I go and I find uh, here's degree of freedom four and I'm looking for uh, two values that are close to 18.28. So I go there and I find a p value is between 0 0.001 and 0 0.0025. If you use the calculator, you should have gotten a p value of exactly 0 0.0011 or approximately, sorry, 0 0.0011 which also lies between 0 0.01 and 0 0.0025. So we were correct whether we use the table or we use the calculator. So let's use that information. First, how do you interpret that p-value? Not conclude, but just simply interpret the p-value. What does 0 0.0011 mean? Well, 0 0.0011, 0 0.0011 means that that's the probability of observing a difference in distributions among the three treatment groups as larger or larger than the ones in the study. You can read through the rest of that sentence to get more STEM language, but what conclusion would you draw would be where we get to compare against the alpha. So 0 0.001 is less than 0 0.05, so we get to reject the null. You can read in context what that means. I'm going to go ahead and move forward to talking about what do we do now that we've rejected our null. Oh, right. There's a wrap-up uh, information about chi-square test for homogeneity. I recommend you take a snap out of it or copy it or something. But... What about our follow-up analysis? So our chi-square test for homogeneity allows us to compare the distribution of a categorical variable for any number of populations or treatments. If the test allows us to reject, which we just did, of no difference, we want to then do a follow-up analysis that examines the differences in detail. So you don't just get to reject and say, yeah, there's obviously a difference when we play different music. You have to start doing some analysis of why or where you notice this difference. So we're going to start by examining which cells in the two-way table show large deviations between the observed and expected counts. 
then look at the individual components to see which terms contribute most to the chi-square statistic. So you can see that in that little table down there. Uh, we've got some information, but to summarize where we're really looking at, uh, we want to talk about just two of the nine components that make up the chi-square. Our uh, chi-square statistic contribute about 14, uh, about 77% of the total chi-square. And we're led to a specific conclusion from that. Orders of Italian entrees are strongly affected by Italian and French music. So we're not just saying, yes, you can buy, you buy different entrees based off of the mood of the, or the, the genre of music being played. Well, then we want more than that. We want to know, okay, specifically, what did we notice? And so when we actually look at the French music, because that's what the columns represent, the French music and the French I think column two was French food, but we noticed that there is that four, uh, the chi-square statistic in those is 14. Um, so that's where we say that, hey, that's a lot stronger. That's a big chunk of our chi-square statistic. So since that's a big chunk of the, the, the distance from the observed and expected, that's probably what's was most strongly affected. So we'll continue doing follow-up analysis whenever we see a reject the null, and I will see you in the next video.